Okay, Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 31. It's our Old Testament reading. This is Isaiah speaking to the people. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in who brings princes to nothing and makes rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he bows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. Who brings out their hosts by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. What do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Those verses begin with these words from Isaiah to the people. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Have you not been told from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? And then a little bit later on, he says it again. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Why was Isaiah asking the question, do you know the Lord? Why was he asking them, do you know about the Lord and his works? Because let's look at what's happening here. These words were prophesied into a backdrop of devastation and desolation as the people of Israel were licking their wounds in Babylon as they were taken from their foreign land, as they were held captives, as they were paying the price for the disobedience over the years of the breaking of their covenant, of moving outside of God's protection and now they were devastated now they were feeling hopeless remember that's the chapter if we read the start of Isaiah 40 that's the one which begins comfort comfort my people all your sins are taken away Isaiah was prophesying into them do not lose hope and in prophesying he say hey don't you know have you not heard he was warning them that in the midst of this time, you need to go back to who the Lord is. You are focusing on your devastation. You are focusing on your despair. But he was crying out, do you know who the Lord is? Have you not heard? Every generation, every generation needs to affirm and go back to their need for the knowledge of God. Because, why? Because our knowing God, it's our knowing him that produces the faith and the hope and the love that sustains us to move forward. In fact, the prophet Hosea prophesied this. Hosea 4.6 said, My people are destroyed through lack of knowledge. Isn't that interesting? My people, this is God speaking through the prophet, are destroyed through lack of knowledge. When knowledge of God is lost, destruction comes. Even for good people, even for people whose hearts 
are after God. If knowledge is not there, they will miss the mark. There was a beautiful, a great example of that in the Old Testament, the story of King Josiah. That's worth reading again. It's in 2 Kings 22, if you want to follow that up. And this is the situation. Josiah's grandfather Manasseh, like many of the kings we read, did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And just took the people away from God and were false gods and did evil in his eyes. Josiah's father, Amon, also did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So there were two generations, but as, as Josiah came to the throne when he was only eight years old. But we read, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Unlike his father and his grandfather, his heart was for the law. But for two generations, the knowledge of God had gone. And when Josiah was 18, some 10 years later, as some one of the priests, when going through the temple, which had been used for idolatrous purpose, found the book of the law and he brought it to the king. And when the king actually read the book of the law, the word of God, you know, parts of what it would have been the Old Testament, Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, okay, Exodus, when he read that, he was horrified. He tore his clothes. He realized how far people had, had, had moved from the Lord. And he quickly took charge and brought reform. He cleared the place, the temple of all the foreign gods. He tore down all the altars. He instituted the Passover again. They hadn't even, they'd even stopped celebrating the Passover. He brought it back again. Why? Because what does that do every year? It's recalling what God has done. It's recalling God's faithfulness. It's recalling God's love. It's recalling God's power. All that knowledge was gone. But when Josiah had that again, he turned it around. My people are destroyed through lack of knowledge. And are we not seeing that today in society? We are seeing society moving further and further and further away from the heart of God and the will of God and the ways of God. My people are being destroyed through lack of of knowledge and I'm not just talking about the the moral issues such as the marriage equality one which we've recently had there are so many others violence against women against children discrimination racism all of those sort of things that still prevail are so far from the heart of God but when we know who God is when we know him through his word and when we learn to listen to him through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God works to release his blessing upon us. Why? Because we're focusing on who he is. We're focusing on who he is as a loving and compassionate and powerful God. We're focusing on what he has done, who has proved himself faithful throughout history. When we focus on that, it's like we're recalling our, the past into the present. He is the same God, just as he was faithful in the past, so he is faithful now. Just as he was loving in the past, so he is loving now. Just as he is gracious in the past, so he is gracious now. He is the same, all-knowing, all-present, all-powerful God as he was then, but now. But when we're focusing on our stuff, where we're focusing on the negative stuff and not on God, we miss that. That's why I was saying, Oi, have you not known? Have you not heard? Knowing God. What we want to see is the fulfillment of the word from the prophet Habakkuk. I love this word. Habakkuk 2 verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Let's pray for the fulfillment of that word. This week, as you know, if you're following our prayer guide, we're particularly praying for the world and the church in the country. Let us pray for a greater awareness of God in the world. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for a greater knowledge. Let's speak that prophetic word into as well. Let's pray it into the world for the earth shall be filled with 
with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Let us not bow down in despair. Let us not focus on negativity. Our nets lot say, oh, it's getting worse and it's getting worse and what's going to happen? Every, so many people who don't know God are doing that. And we can easily get caught up with that because we look at the circumstances and become despairing. But through the words of Isaiah, he's calling us back to a knowledge and an awareness of a God who is a God of everlasting love and faithfulness. He is calling us back to the word of God. And we know how it ends, don't we? God is still at work. We operate out of a vision of one day every tribe and tongue from all around, the redeemed of every tribe and every nation gathering around the throne of God. We're going to be among them. Hey, yes, exactly. Woo yes. So that's what we need to remember. And that's what, oops, getting too excited here. That's what Isaiah was trying to convey. What does knowledge do? What can we learn from Psalm 147, which we read at the beginning, and Psalm 130? What are some of the things we learn? We learn that knowledge of God releases praise. Knowing God releases praise. Because when we know him and what he has done, we cannot but but praise him. That's what the psalmist was doing in Psalm 137. Praise the Lord. It is good to sing praises to the Lord. But the psalmist just doesn't say that. He goes on in the psalm and says why it is good to sing praises to the Lord. Why? Because he heals the brokenhearted. We've been praying today for healing of bodies in this case. But it's hearts that are broken that he heals as well. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. Great is the Lord and abundant in power, says the psalmist. He is focusing on who God is and what he has done through history. Why? Because that is building his faith. Why do we praise God in, in, in word and in, in prayer and in song as we've done today? For one reason only. This is not about us. This is about God for who he is and what he has done. That's why we praise him. That's why we worship him. I don't, you know, I've, I've heard, I'm sorry if I've mentioned this before, you know, over the time I've heard people say, oh, yes, I left that church because I wasn't getting anything out of the worship. Well, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, God will move and for genuine and, and reasons, his call, his church, we're all one church and he will sometimes move people to different parts of it. But I, I don't have a lot of time for that as a reason, worded in that way. But you know what? Worship is not about what I get out of it. It's about giving to God. Yes, we all worship in different ways. And we prayed in our prayer meeting for the whole church in this peninsula out around here. Praise God, because we're all wired differently. And we all, and there's a diversity of worship, and we'll do that different ways. But we're worshiping one God. Find where you worship. But worship is not what we get out of. Worship is what we give to God. Praise is what we give to God. But when we do that, it can't help but build our faith. Because in worship, we are declaring who God is. We began today by singing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him for he is my health and salvation when we sing those words and all the others and when you and we for all you've done and you lived and you died and you rose again on high and you opened the way for the world to live again when we sing those words when we're declaring those words that cannot help but build our faith paul says in romans 10:17 faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So when we sing it, when we read it, we declare it, our faith is built. Because even now, what we now know about our brain, the more we focus on something, the more, and God created us this way, the more we focus us on something, our brain actually changes to focus on that. 
So if we focus on negative stuff and we're always down and we're always a glass half empty and, you know, we, sadly we know some people like that, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Do you know people, bless them, who just, you know, you pray for them, but they're just so negative, and next time you see them, they're just more negative and more down. That's because by continuing to focus, they are strengthening that neural pathway in their brain. But the great thing is the opposite is true. When we focus on that that is uplifting and healthy and good and resourceful, and in this case on God, the Holy Spirit, we got, we got the help of the Holy Spirit to renew our mind and strengthen those neural pathways that are focusing on that which will build us up and uplift us. So knowing God releases praise, knowing God strengthens faith. But here, let's get to those beautiful words at the end of Isaiah 40:31. Knowing God that builds our faith enables us to wait. And what happens when we wait? Those who wait for the Lord, what happens? They will renew their strength. They will mount with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Now, you, some of you, some translations you might have noticed say those that wait for the Lord will renew their strength. And some translations, your translation might say those that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Which one's right? The answer is both. You see, Hebrew is such an incredible language. It's not always easy to find English words that fit. And what happens, the root Hebrew word there that's translated... It actually means to wait or look for with eager expectation. So when we read that, those that wait for the Lord or those that hope in the Lord, if you're really looking at the essence of what that is in the Hebrew, is those that wait and look to the Lord with eager expectation. So both words are right. It's not just waiting, 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 wondering if something's happened. No, those that wait for the Lord, waiting out of that sure and certain hope that God will do his thing, that God will be faithful and that God will bring about his purposes regardless of what we're feeling now. And when we do that, the psalmist says our strength is renewed. Our spiritual strength is renewed. We're able to keep going. We're able to rise up when others are falling down. And that beautiful image, they will mount with wings like eagles. I love that image. What does an eagle do? An eagle is the most majestic bird, isn't it? It soars above and beyond. It is majestic and it is above what's happening on the ground. Sorry? Even in the storm. Beautiful. Thank you. That's that uh, other birds hide, but eagles um, will fly in the face of a storm. Isn't that awesome? That is true, isn't it? Other birds will fly. Eagles will fly in the base of the storm. Other birds will hide. Okay? There's too many good people who love God and follow him who are acting more like chooks than eagles. Chooks hang together, don't they? They're a ground bird and they hang around in a pack together. Oh, it's a bad way. Oh, what's the world coming to? Oh, people aren't following God's ways anymore. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, nothing seems to be happening. Oh, no, no, no. Following with the chooks, scratching in the ground. That's not who we are called to be. We are called to be those who rise up above this. We are called to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. You are called to stand out. You ought to be different, not in a judgmental way, well, I'm a Christian, you're not. But no, stand out and be a positive influence for the kingdom of God and the ways of God and the nature of God. That's who we're called to be. And the more we know him, the more our faith is built and the more we're able to call on, draw on the strength of the Lord through the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit and the more we are able to stand our ground in challenging times. The more 
we're able to hold the course when we're getting buffeted either by temptation or pressure by others or or whatever the more in the face of health issues or financial issues or relationship issues or any other issues or wider political issues or whatever the more we face that the more we're able to stand our ground and hold the course why because we are focused on not on us but the everlasting God the everlasting God have you not known says have you not heard says Isaiah our God is an everlasting God that's what we need to focus on and in this time where we're particularly focusing on prayer let us be expectant that God is going to move. Let's operate out of a vision, not out of the circumstances of who God is. Let's wait for him because when we know him and focus on him, our faith is strengthened and we will stay the course. And that in itself, friends, is a testimony to others. It's not about preaching to people. It's not about all that. But do you know, even sometimes the Lord will give us opportunities to share our faith and prompt us to share our faith. Go for it. But do you know, even being able to stay the course in rough times and to do so to not a false happiness, but, you know, that inner peace where people see, hey, we are drawing from a strength beyond ourselves. That in itself is a powerful testimony to the greatness of our God. Amen.